Hi, this is Jake von Slat. Today's project is this iPhone dock that I made for my new car. Now, I'm going to start by telling you a little bit about uh, how the things I had to do to interface the iPhone to the car radio because it did not have an auxiliary input. And uh, I'll tell you a little bit about how I mounted the dock to the dashboard a little later on. Um, but the primary thing we're going to be talking about today is how I designed the model from which I 3D printed this using the Autodesk 123 design software. So this is primarily going to be an Autodesk 123 tutorial. And I'll go through the process of creating this model and extruding the sketches and uh, we'll talk about what sketches are and what extrusion is in a minute uh, and prepared it for printing on my RepRap Bruce Mendel. So first let me tell you about what I had to go through to get the audio signal into the radio in my car. Um, so this was a 2007 model. Uh, it was just the car I was looking for. Uh, the particular uh, one that I found at uh, a local dealer uh, had a lot more options than I really wanted. Um, my feeling about uh, the fancy options is they're, they're just more things to break. Uh, and, um, you know, I expressed that uh, uh, to the dealer uh, as he was trying to uh, uh, sell me on uh, the wonders of the satellite navigation AM FM radio uh, that this car had. Uh, it had THX sound and uh, it really did sound great. It's got nine speakers and a subwoofer um, with separate amplifiers in each door uh, and, and it sounded fabulous uh, but there's no auxiliary input. Um, and those, those FM transmitters uh, for uh, integrating your iPod uh, into your car radio really do not sound very well. It sound very good. Um, so I did a little, uh, I did a little research, um, and I, 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 and I told the 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 fellow at the dealership, um, listen, this thing is basically a computer, and there's nothing. The only thing sadder than a five-year-old computer is a five-year-old computer that that's embedded in your dashboard. So. Uh, uh, you know, this, this radio is really not a selling point. This is more of a liability. Um, yeah, I managed to talk them down a little bit, and I, I bought the car anyways, because I figured I, I could hack something into this. Uh, so I did a little research, and I discovered a company that made uh, this product. Now, this, this uh, radio has a uh, satellite radio ready port on the back, and this product has a harness that plugs into that port and then plugs into the harness on the car and a converter that takes the output from that satellite radio and uh, uh, puts it on a couple of RCA uh, plugs. Um, unfortunately, apparently, the style of radio in my car uh, changed mid-year and the particular one that I have it is not compatible with this device. So I was not able to use that. Uh, but I remember a couple of weeks ago there was a story on Hackaday uh, about a fella in a uh, similar situation and what he did was tap into the audio output of the CD player um, and then inject the line from the uh, iPhone on onto those uh, uh, traces on the circuit board. So I took the radio out, out, out of the car and uh, remove the CD changer and the manufacturer was very helpful. The uh, uh, left out, right out and audio ground were uh, uh, clearly marked on the circuit board. Uh, so I, I cut the traces on the circuit board because I don't use CDs anymore. I rip everything and, and import it into uh, the computer as soon as I get it. Um, so cut those edges on the uh, uh, board, soldered wires onto the ribbon cable, uh, put a, a phone jack uh, pigtail out the back of the radio, and then closed it all up and put it in the car, and it sounded beautiful. Uh, I connected the, um, the iPhone to it with uh, this cable, and I uh, got this on Amazon. If you go to the, uh, the web page listed uh, below, there's a link to that. And uh, it, it's just a perfect cable for using in the car. It's got uh, audio output, USB, and the iPhone uh, adapter. Um, 
and it sounded fabulous except there was a lot of noise this this car like most modern cars has its own local area network and modules that communicate throughout the car and they're sending little signals and all of this digital noise was coming through the uh, uh, the power adapter um, and coming out through the iPod the the the, uh, the audio uh, so I recognized this as, as a ground loop issue and uh, that was kind of um, uh, something that is very common because you've got this you've got this ground where the power is attached and then you also have another ground where the audio is attached and if there's a circuit somewhere through the car you're liable to get potentials across those circuits and those come over the uh, uh, the audio as as buzzing and clicking and interference um, again went on Amazon found this ground loop isolator for like 13 bucks and plugged it in between the two uh, connectors and absolutely removed all of the interference I had. Sounds absolutely beautiful now. Uh, now mounting the iPhone dock to the dashboard uh, was a pretty straightforward thing. I have several of these GPS windshield mounts. Whenever I see these in the trash I grab them. Uh, very often someone will uh, uh, toss out a dead GPS and I will always grab these because these are these are very useful and what I'm going to do here is, is simply cut off all this extra stuff and then use some 3 8 some 3m VHB double sticky tape that stands for very high bond and uh, you peel both sides of the tape you stick the part together you hold it together for about 60 seconds it, it takes about 60 seconds of full contact to really develop its full strength particularly when the surface is slightly rough uh, but once you do that, VHB is incredibly strong and it will, it will never come apart. It stands up to heat. It's very tough stuff. Um, in fact, I'll, uh, um, I'll use another one of these to uh, uh, make a guard dock for, uh, for traveling. So now let's get to the Tutorial. One, two, 3D design is free from Autodesk. You can uh, either download it or use the online web-based version. I, I've never tried the web-based version. I, I run it on a 64-bit Windows PC. It's also available for 32-bit Windows and Macintosh. Um, it's gone through a few iterations. Uh, it, the very first beta version was kind of unstable uh, and so unstable it wasn't usable, uh, but it's gotten a lot better. Um, it is aimed at people who are doing 3D printing. It's, it's a little bit simplistic in some of the CAD operations. Uh, the beta version actually had a lot more functionality when it came to positioning things and aligning things. And I think they're slowly adding these features back in in the, uh, in the production version. Um, but right now there are, there are a few lacks here and there, and I'll, I'll mention those as we go along. Uh, and I, I figured out some workarounds. Uh, so let, let's get to this. Okay, so this is the plane in which we're working and we can control our view with this tool over here. So I'm going to start by shifting to the top view because the first thing I want to do is create a sketch and the way we usually make 3D parts is we create an outline of what we're doing in one view, in a two-dimensional view, and then we extrude that into three dimensions. So a shape like this, the simple envelope is this shape. So I build a 2D sketch of all of the elements in this shape, and then I extrude portions of it to create the rough shape of the whole dock and, and we'll take a look at this now. Okay, so I am going to begin with a sketch and this is how we start all objects. And I'm going to choose the rectangle tool and after I choose a tool the first thing I have to do is select my sketch plane. There's really only one plane I can select now which is the, the base grid. So I'm going to click on the base grid and I go into sketch mode and uh, 
the little uh, hint tells me to click the first corner of the rectangle. If you ever get lost, take a look at these hints because they'll tell you what you need to do next. So I'm going to set that right at the origin and pull it out a little bit. And uh, now I have this handle attached. Um, now I can line this up on the grid, but I find it a lot easier to just type in the actual dimensions. So this is 65 millimeters and I hit return automatically goes with the other one and uh, it's 16 millimeters deep hit return again and one more time to complete the sketch so that's our basic outline now I'm going to build the uh, I, I'm going to create the outline for the inner walls of the iPhone dock I'm going to go back to my sketch tool and this time I'm going to go down and I'm going to select offset which is a useful tool for creating shapes that are the same as shapes you already have but either bigger or smaller. Um, I'm going to select now this sketch as my sketch plane and when you go into sketch mode you get this little green check marks. I'm going to select this curve to offset. It calls everything curves. It's not really a curve. I'm going to pull in, and you'll see this is this is the the line I'm making, and I want the walls of this to be three millimeters thick. So I'm going to select three millimeters, and there's my inner wall. Now, so you can see there's a little feature here to hold the iPhone in place. So I'm going to create those now as little rectangles. I'm going to use the scroll wheel to zoom in a little bit, and sketch tool, rectangle. I'm going to select my sketch plane, origin at this corner, and I'm going to go, I want it to be three millimeters, and I want that lip to be three millimeters, so the width of this rectangle is going to be six millimeters. That a couple times, and there we go. Now I'm going to zoom out, zoom in on the other corner, and do the same thing. Okay, we're almost ready to extrude. We just have to do one more thing, and that's remove these extra lines. So I'm going to go up again to the sketch tool, and this time I'm going to go down to trim. I'm going to select the sketch I want to trim. You can select really anything. Um, and then when I mouse over, the lines turn red, and clicking on them removes them. So I'm going to remove these two lines and then exit my sketch. And we are ready to extrude, so I'll go back to the home view and I'm going to zoom out a little bit and I'm going to go to our construction tool set and I'm going to choose extrude. I'm going to start with the back panel and I can grab this arrow and I can move it up as I want but since I know what I want it to be, I want it to be 85 millimeters, I'm just going to put in 85 millimeters there. Okay, now I'm going to go to construct again, choose the inside, and this height I want to be 25 millimeters. And extrude once more. And the front panel, we want a little lip 3 millimeters high, just like we have on the side. So this is going to come up. 28 millimeters. And I'll zoom out again and rotate this around. You, you right click and drag to rotate it. And there you can see we have the basic form of our iPhone dock. So the next operation we want to perform is to create the pocket for the connector. Now this cable has a fairly standard connector and the way I decided to integrate it into the dock uh, was to make a pocket for it. Now I didn't want to cut the wire off and feed it down through the pocket so I created a slot in the back and I'll show you how I did that a little bit later. Uh, but let me show you how this works. So basically the connector slides into the pocket in the back 
and then goes upright. Make sure it's facing the right direction. It's got to go this way and not this way. And then that just drops down into the pocket. And it's quite a tight fit. It holds it nice and firmly so that the iPhone slides in and right onto the connector, making it a true dock. And it makes the front nice and clean, easy to get the cable out again. And it's, uh, it's a solution that I think has worked really well. So let me uh, show you how I created that. Okay, so uh, let's go back to our top view and we will we'll zoom in. Now I'm going to go to this little eye over here and I'm going to say hide sketches and that's going to turn off that bottom sketch because we don't need that anymore but we don't want to delete it just in case we, uh, we have some use for it. And I'm going to zoom in on the surface into which we're going to put this hole. Now I'll go back to my sketch tool, choose the rectangle again. This time, now you'll notice that I can choose any of these surfaces to be my sketch plane. So I can put a, a sketch on any of these surfaces. In this case, I'm going to put the sketch on this surface. Now, this is where we run into these, these deficient CAD tools, these deficient two-dimensional uh, tools. The grid, I believe, is still indexed to the plane below. I think this grid is uh, a, a, a block throughout the whole workspace. Uh, and what we have is a perspective view and the grid becomes difficult to use for dimensioning things on anything other than the origin plane. Uh, so what I do is geometric construction to position things. So that requires doing a little bit of math in your sketch, uh, and I mean pencil and paper sketch uh, beforehand. It's always a good idea to start with a pencil paper sketch before you start constructing things, at least until you get really uh, uh, good with the software. So this is a 27.5 millimeter wide hole that's 8 millimeters tall. That means that the first corner of it is going to be 15.75 millimeters in and one millimeters up. So uh, I'm going to zoom in here and I'm going to select the corner and I'm going to create a rectangle that is 15.75 by one millimeter. Now what that's going to do is locate the corner of our connector hole. So I'm going to go ahead and do another rectangle, same plane, start on this corner, and our connector hole is 8 by 275 There's our connector hole nicely centered in the space. <clears throat> okay, now, in addition to the connector, we need the hole that goes through the bottom for the wire. So I'm going to do the same thing again and choose a rectangle. This will be my sketch plane. I'm going to start in this corner. And this time, I'm going to be 13.75 by 4. Okay, that locates the center of this space. Now I'm going to go and use my circle sketch tool. This plane here, it is a 6 diameter, uh, 6 millimeter diameter wire. Select that, and there we go. Now I'm going to uh, extrude this down into the solid. So I will choose the area I want to extrude down. I'm going to extrude the hole all the way through the part first. So I'm going to uh, chain select with a control click and a control click both parts here. We could trim these out, but it's not really necessary. Um, we can extrude, extrude the, uh, the sum of these components. Construct menu. 
and we're going down so I'm going to do like minus 40 because I know that will go all the way down through there we go now I'm going to select these parts and the hole is 20 millimeters deep back to construct extrude minus 20 millimeters hit return hide those sketches now that we're done with them and there's our hole Okay, so last operation is to create these slots on the back for putting the connector for putting the connector through and for uh, securing the wire. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Yes, let's do that now. Let's do that now, and then we'll do the thing that I forgot the first time, the thing that you do not see on this part. But we'll get to that in a minute. Okay, so uh, I'm going to move around to the back view. Kind of want that uh, right side up. Okay. Um, and one of the things we can do over here with this toolbar is we can show the outline so we can see what's inside the part. And what I want to do is uh, build that um, structure and then extrude it into the part. So sketch rectangle and I want this to be my sketch plane and I want to be roughly lined up with that, uh, um, that central part. So, this is a 65 millimeter wide part, and I want this to be a 5 millimeter wide channel in the center. So, I'm going to start at the corner and I'm going to go in 30 millimeters. And I, I want that slot to be slightly above the shelf, but not too far above. So let's say, let's say 32 and 30. So this rectangle locates one edge of the slot that I want to bring up. So I'm going to go to uh, rectangle again, this sketch plane, select here. I'm going to go up this high, so I'm going to go up 32, and my width is going to be 5. There's the bottom part of my slot. Now, my hole is going to be the same size as the hole we did earlier. So, sketch again. I'm going to select this as my uh, plane, and uh, interestingly, this seems to be a new feature. Uh, when you select a rectangle in your sketch as your sketch plane, it will note the center point of things. Uh, so it looks like this is noting the ce center point of this uh, uh, rectangle. So I'm going to go ahead and use that as my corner. Um, so I'm going to be... Uh, uh, let's see, half of 27.5 is 13.75, so 13.75 by 8. So there's half my hole, and I'm going to go ahead and create another rectangle from here. Same dimensions, 8 by 13.75, and there is my 27.5 inch slot. Um, Alright, so uh, let's take a look at the bottom. It looks like we want to go in roughly half so this is 16 so we're going to go in we're going to extrude in about eight millimeters 
So let's choose our extrusion tool, select, 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 and we're going to go in minus 8. And we'll hide our sketches. And there is our slot for our connector. Okay, now let's do the thing that I forgot the first the first time and the thing you don't see here. Now, when you use this connector to connect the iPhone to the car stereo, the audio path line out comes out through this connector and uh, uh, throughout the phone plug. Works great. Um, and that's all audio except for speakerphone. When you use the speakerphone feature it continues to use the speaker in the iPhone. And of course, whenever you're using the phone, uh, you're using the microphone on this side. So we need some sort of uh, a channel in the dock to, uh, um, to get to that, so that uh, when it's in the dock, it's, the sound isn't all muffled when we're using the speakerphone. All right, so I'm gonna kind of eyeball those because they're not too critical. Um, all right, I am going to go back to this view, and let's turn our materials back on, and I'm going to choose Sketch. This is my plane. I'm going to zoom in until I get the finer grid, and these are approximately two millimeters in, and two point five millimeters up if I call recall correctly. I'm going to click there and I'm going to make them um, eight millimeters by three millimeters. That looks pretty good to me. So I'll zoom out, zoom in over here. Loop. Same thing again. This is my sketch plane. I'm gonna go in, and like I said, this is this is rough. Uh, and I'm gonna go two millimeters over, and two point five millimeters up, and I'm gonna create an eight millimeter by three millimeter uh, rectangle. There. Um, now I'm gonna. Uh, my construct tool. I'm going to select both of these and I want them to go down approximately uh, I'm going to say to about there to the bottom. So I'm going to go down about 12 millimeters. So Minus 12, down we go. Okay, that looks pretty good to me. Uh, if we look at our outlines, zoom out, Oop. there we go. That's about what I want. All right, now, this is the tricky bit. We want to, at the bottom of those holes, um, well, this is one of the issues that I was talking about with the, the CAD uh, uh, functions in 123D design. There's no way to extrude from the front in to, to meet those holes. Uh, that, that's sort of what you'd be thinking of if this was a mis machine function. Um, so you have to do your sketch on the inside front wall of that hole and extrude it out through the face to get things to line up. Uh, and uh, that's a little tricky. Watch this. <clears throat> All right, we're going to zoom in. Uh, I'm going to hide my sketches. Now I'm going to tilt up. And I'm going to very carefully zoom in so I can see, see the inside of this surface. If I were here, I could not see this surface because it's blocked by this surface. So I have to be in a place where I can see these surfaces. 
and I am going to choose sketch and now I can select that as a sketch plane. Once I select it as a sketch plane, 123D knows what I'm doing and I can change my point of view <clears throat> and choose this corner. This is a 3 by 8 inch rectangle. And remember, I have to go back over here so I can see that. Sketch, which is this. Now I can work at this angle. Choose that corner. Again, a 3 by 8 rectangle. All right. Now I need to go back to where I can quote unquote see those. I'm going to choose my extrude tool. That looks like I'm not quite able to see that there. And I'm going to choose that surface, that surface, and I am going to go minus 20. And there are my holes for my, sa my sound. I have my sketches, bring back my uh, materials, and there is my iPhone dock. Okay, now we get to the fun part. You'll notice these are rounded, the hole in the center, rounded. The easiest way to do these is with the fillet function and the chamfer function. Uh, and it's also best to do these after you block out the solid and get your shape ready. Uh, uh, it's, it's easiest to add these as 3D features rather than to try to build them into your sketch. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and do these. Um, all right, I'm going to go ahead and save this right now because it's a good idea to save your part as you work on it. Okay. So the fillet tool and the chamfer tool are under the modify menu. I'm going to go ahead with the chamfer tool and uh, the chamfer tool and the fillet tool automatically do chain select so you can just click on the things that you want to chamfer. I'm going to go ahead and chamfer these. Oh wait, I forgot something. Um, I'm going to go ahead and chamfer these and then I'm going to do what I forgot, which will be a real quick, quick operation. Uh, I'm going to go with about a two millimeter chamfer here. Um, hit turn. Okay, there's my chamfer. Okay, here's what I forgot. Uh, I don't want to insulate the whole back of the iPhone, so I put some channels in the back that lead to the, the hole so that there can be some air movement through the, uh, the, the case. And I'm hoping this will, this will cool the iPhone a little bit. I think most of the chips that get really hot in the phone are up near the top. They're the, uh, um, the transmitter chips and such. Uh, but I'm hoping this, uh, um, these little channels will help some air come through. Uh, without weakening the, the back structure. Uh, also, they reduce the amount of plastic in the part by a little bit. And, and they're easy to make, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, make those now. So we're going to choose Sketch Tool. This is our sketch plane, and I'm just totally going to eyeball these uh, because they're, uh, they're, they're not critical at all. And I'm going to do one here. And another one here. Whoops, there we go. I'm just making them five millimeters wide. Another one here. One here. One 
here, and then I'm gonna connect these. Okay, now I'm going to select them. Oh, wait, I'm still in uh, sketch mode. Now I'm going to select them all. And I am going to extrude them one millimeter into the part. Hide those sketches. And there are my cooling channels. Okay, so let's get back to filleting and uh, and chamfering. So we've chamfered, chamfered these. Um, I am going to uh, also chamfer the top where we insert the phone just to make it a little bit uh, uh, easier to do so. I chamfer these, I'm not gonna chamfer the slots. Just these pieces. All right, and uh, I'm going to go for just a one millimeter chamfer here. All right, now let's round those holes with the fillet tool. Select the fillet tool. I zoom in here. I'm going to select these. And you can select through with the fillet tool, so you don't actually have to flip the thing around to you can see these. And this is an eight millimeter wide hole. So if I do a four millimeter fillet, I'll have perfect half circles like that. And uh, I'm gonna do the same thing down here. tool, select this one, this one, this is getting a little uh, tricky to see, so I'm going to rotate so I can actually see those, this one, and this one, and again, four millimeters, there we go. Now, finally, I am going to fill it the outside edges. In when you're three D printing, uh, it's always nice to prevent the printer from having to make a ninety degree angle. Uh, so we're going to give these a. I think a two millimeter radius. It'll soften the uh, the curves, and I think we'll do that to the bottom too. Let's fill it all the way around. Two millimeters. Okay. Now, for the speaker and the microphone. Uh, we want the sound to get in and out easy, so we're going we're to make horns on these. So uh, uh, let's finish this operation and fill it again. Oh, actually, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this back angle. I'll turn this off so we can see outlines only. And so the sound doesn't have to make a right angle turn. I'm going to put a surface there with the chamfer function. And I'm going to go for like a four, maybe. That oh, looks like I've lost my selection, so. Okay, so there, finish that. 
Um, that looks a little tight, so now I'm going to select the fillet tool. Select here and here, and I'm going to go for like a radius 3. That looks a little nicer. And let's finish this off. Fill it. I'm going to select the outside of all of these openings. And there we go. Let's go. Let's turn our materials back on and look at our completed part. Uh, let's complete that operation. And here we go. Here's our completed part ready to print. So we will save to my computer and then we will export as an, ST, X, an STL file And now we'll bring that into um, Print Run, or Pronterface, as many people call it, uh, and uh, slice it and print it to the 3D printer, and we will have our iPhone dock. Thank you very much for watching, and um, if you are interested in more tutorials, um, please make suggestions in the comments, and I'll see you next time.